Hello there fellow model makers and welcome to part 1 of my Tamiya 148 scale Spitfire Mark 1 build. Now this is a brand new model from Tamiya and has some really innovative and unique engineering features. I had seen a few reviews of the kit and had been impatiently waiting for its release. So, without wasting any further time, let's dive into the box. We have three plastic sprues separately packed. One clear sprue and a bag of goodies. Apart from the decal sheet, looks like we have some stickers here, a sheet of masks but not pre-cut, and some photo etch parts. The contents do remind me of an Edward Profi pack. We have a separate information sheet with a brief history of the Spitfire and some pictures. Unfortunately, the pictures are black and white and too small to really work as effective reference. But still, nice touch. And here we have the instruction sheet. I can tell you that despite there being a lot many more parts in this kit than in a standard 148 kit, the instructions were reasonably well detailed and simple to follow. The stencil layout is given here. This I presume is common for all the three variants of the aircraft that you can build from this kit. The paint scheme for the aircraft is printed on this nice glossy sheet which is in 1 to 1 ratio with the kit. At least the first scheme is. So, if you're one of the modelers who like to use camo scheme cutouts for masking, this should make you happy. Let's look at the sprues in some detail. Here is the sprue with the fuselage halves on it. And straight off, you can see that it has been designed differently. The top of the fuselage has two options depending on whether you want the canopy open or closed. As is usually the case with Tamiya, the pieces are crisply molded with nice clean sharp details. The second sprue has the wings in it and a small bag with poly caps, presumably for the propeller. Once again, nicely molded parts, no sign of any flash or poorly placed ejection pin marks so far. We also have the propeller assembly and the instrument panel here. The third sprue has more parts for the inside of the cockpit and the tail section. We also have a pilot figure, but I doubt I will use it, considering that there is so much detail inside the cockpit and I don't want to hide it all behind a pilot figure. The clear parts are nicely molded and appear to be distortion free. Also, no seam lines that would have to be polished off later. The photo etch plate has the seat belts and some more detailed pieces for the inside of the cockpit. Also, what I presume are grills for the inside of the air intake. The decal sheet looks well in register and nicely printed. Not too shiny and not too thick, as far as I can tell. Onto the build. I start off by cutting the fuselage and the side walls from the sprue and cleaning them up. Like I said before, there are two options for the side wall. 
a open or closed canopy. So one must make that choice pretty much with the first step of the build. I am going for an open canopy. Here's another example of the innovative engineering by Tamiya. The panels on the outside are not flush flat against each other. If you notice, some panels are higher than others. The difference in height is most evident between the engine cowling and the panel just below the cockpit. This was apparently how the panels were on the real aircraft. And I must say I am impressed that this is the first time I am seeing a kit builder even trying to replicate that. The inside of the cockpit is first painted with AK's Extreme Metal Aluminium. Once the paint was dry, I masked off a part of the interior as indicated by the instructions and painted the cockpit with XF71 Cockpit Green IJN. Now I felt while this color is fairly close to what I had seen in pictures on the internet, it may be a shade too light. However, I think some of that will be fixed with the addition of clear coats and maybe a wash. Still, I would have added a drop of green to this paint. But for this build, I decided to stick with the Tamiya instructions. Now several smaller detail parts are provided separately in the kit. And this is a blessing, as now I can paint them separately and glue them on, rather than having to go with a fine brush and straining my eyes to paint the parts. I am using Satin Black by MIG. There are however some details that need to be hand painted. Once the parts were dry, I glued them in place. I next brushed the parts with a metallic paint to pick out the details as well as give the parts a metallic feel.
a sponge is used to add some light chipping in the cockpit area. I will weather this aircraft lightly. The logic being that these aircrafts operated from their home bases during the Battle of Britain and would have been well serviced. I spray on a coat of gloss varnish. Once the varnish was dry, I gave the cockpit a wash with Tamiya's black panel line color. The extra wash was wiped away with a Q-tip dipped in odorless spirit. The cockpit is very well detailed with many tiny parts. The challenge is painting them as there are many details that have to be hand painted. So I decided I would paint each individual part separately and then glue them in place.
I had painted the instrument panel black earlier and I will use the decals provided in the kit for the dials. But it is a little difficult aligning the decals to the dials. So to make life a little easier, I first dry brush the instrument panel so the dials are clearly visible. And now the decals can go in, in line with the raised dials on the panel. With the cockpit almost complete, I add some chipping and glue in the steed belts. But before I glue them in, I paint the belts and let them dry. Once all the pieces were done, I glued in the cockpit tub inside the fuselage halves. I did remove some paint from the surfaces so that I would get a good bond. Finally, the fuselage halves are closed up. Right then fellow model makers, I must say the kit has a very nice out of box cockpit. Very well detailed and fun to put together. But that's all we have time for this edition. I hope you enjoyed the video please do like and subscribe. Next time, we will continue with the build and start painting the kit. Till then, good luck and happy model making.